Hey everyone, Boomzy here with the Gunpla Network. Today we're going to take a look and review the RE100 Nightingale. This was brought to us by our fine sponsors over at Canadian Gundam, so make sure you check out the website canadiangundam.com and use your code Gunpla Network to save 10% off your entire order. Now this thing is massive. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of articulation as you can see here. This is pretty much how you're going to see it unless you do some really heavy modifications. And even with those, there's not really any stands that are made for this thing. And it is quite heavy. With that being said, let's go ahead and start with its head articulation. You're going to have a little bit of left and right, but that's pretty much it. No up and down. Uh, this piece does remove, so let me show you that. Inside there, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see, but you can place an LED. I tried to find a green one so I could try to show off the mono eye, but I was unable to get one in time. So if you look closely there inside the head, you can see where the lens is. And normally that would be covered up by one of the stickers, which they do provide, which is a foil sticker, which was an odd addition to me, because if you cover that up, you're not going to be able to see the LED shine through. These were the foil stickers included, one for the scope for the Mega Beam rifle and the lens on the eyeball. You are able to remove the head completely since it's only held on by this pig. And you can move the mono eye with this piece, but it's very, very difficult. Um, I found it easier to just kind of pop this piece off and kind of move it around um, on your own if you wanted to do so. The shoulders have absolutely no articulation at all, but they do look really nice. As you can see there on the shoulder, um, all of those yellow pieces are actually plastic and not stickers. So that was a very, very nice addition. The arms also have limited articulation as well. Um, they do go up as well as back, but they tend to come out of the socket, which is kind of frustrating when you're trying to pose it. But I'll go ahead and show you um, what it can do once you remove it. It's actually easier to try to pose the arms and then put them back on. You got a little bit of a wiggle there. You got a full swivel for the bicep. Got one of those arm crunches there. That's about all you're gonna get. The hand, it does have a little bit of rotation. Here's another angle of that. The hand supplied though is uh, one of the MG style type hands, which really really has some great articulation to it but this plate here can be very frustrating when you're trying to make it pose because it likes to come off taking a look at the wings here for the funnels you got some articulation as well and these tend to also come off a little bit if they are slightly moved but there's some good details here i actually can't wait to get some paint on this thing as it is it's just straight out of the box without any paint aligning or any of the decals provided Speaking of decals, it does come with this sticker sheet here, which is pretty nice. I might order some different ones after I figure out what I want to do. I don't know if I'm going to do a matte coat on it or maybe a high gloss. We'll see what, what I end up doing with it. I actually thought about changing it from maybe um, instead of the red color, maybe a stein color. I don't know yet. We'll see what happens. Now you may remove the funnels. Um, they do come off independently, but they're really, really stuck on there. So. You got to take that piece off and then <sighs> then you're able to pop off the funnels and you can do that with pretty much the majority of them, but they're very, very difficult to take off. And also there's no effect parts that are provided for these funnels. Moving on to the side skirt here, you will get some articulation, a little bit of a swivel as well as a back and forward like so. And as you can see here, you're going to get that nice thruster detail in that side skirt as well. And here's the side skirt removed, so you can kind of see what that looks like. It really is a fantastic piece. I've seen a lot of people do this in chrome and it looks fantastic. Now the torso is going to have like the most limited articulation that you can get. You, basically that's all you're really going to get with it. But there is some really nice um, piping detail over here towards the side of it as well as leading to the back which this is all one plastic piece, which is very nice. Moving on to the back of the kit, you're gonna see all these canisters here. Um, they do have a little bit of articulation, but you have to kind of hold the torso to get them to move a little bit. Um, they don't really move that much. I wouldn't really 
plan on moving them. Uh, there are some heavy seam lines in the middle of them, so that may be something that you want to clean up. And I just wanted to highlight that piping detail that leads all the way to the back. Up next we got the lobster tail as I like to call it. Also same thing here, this is just full plastic for the thrusters, kind of looking like General Grievous. Uh, nothing too basic, this thing is huge. Uh, you can kind of wear it as a mask to be honest. And here it is from the side, you're going to see some nice opportunities for panel lining as well as detail work. Uh, maybe even doing some extra etching in there might help some of that uh, lack of detail from the Re100. But overall it looks pretty good, and again, same with the thrusters here. Amazing detail that I like to point out. Next up we have the front skirts. You're going to get some articulation with those, not a lot. But all of the yellow detail as well for the vent covers and vent holes are going to be pure plastic and no stickers, which is a definite plus. The abnormally large front skirt here is going to have absolutely no articulation and a lot of people are going to ask you why this part exists. If you know why this robot dong exists, let us know in the comments below. Now it's going to be virtually impossible for me to lift this kit up without it kind of teetering and taking a dive for its own. But we're going to try to do it here. Let me move this stand out of the way. And let's check that stanky leg. Alright, stanky leg. Hey, we're good to go. Now you are going to get a kick to the front, not that it really matters. <laughs> as well as a kind of a kick to the back, but it tends to loosen the legs and they fall off like so. So I wanted to show the leg off on its own. Uh, you do get a bend at the knee, as well as some foot articulation. These pieces do move here as well. And some more thruster detail underneath. Stangale! Inside of the front skirts here, I did also want to mention, you do have this little mechanism here as well. And taking a look at the rear skirt here, uh, underneath you got some giant canisters with some pretty heavy seam lines on the side. And you do get a little bit of articulation up and down when you have the legs off. Um, it's a little bit easier to move them, but with all that chaos going on, it's quite difficult to move it when it's on. There is this little kickstand here. This will help balance the big O badonk on the unit. And you can kind of tuck that back in like so. Here's some of the accessories that the kit comes with. First, you're gonna have the shield. The Mega Beam Rifle. And the giant Beam Tomahawk or Beam Axe. Here's the Nightingale next to the SD, cross silhouette. The real grade, 1 1 44th scale. and the Master Grade Gramps. So what do I think about the Nightingale? Well, I love this kit from the first time I saw it in the massive box on a shelf in my local hobby shop. With some extra details, joint maintenance, and etching or scribing, I think this kit can really shine. It may need a new paint job as the um, glossiness and the red, it's a little flat, but it does look good. With this thing, it already has such a shelf presence if you can even find a spot to put it, to be honest. Um, I have no idea where I'm going to put this thing as of right now. Straight out of the box with some panel lines uh, and the stickers provided, it probably won't look too shabby, to be honest. My only real complaints are the hands and the wrists. They're slightly lackluster and feel pretty brittle and weak. Uh, not that they're going to break, but they tend to pop off a lot when they're holding the weapons, so um, you can't really do much without having the arms down. Now the peg holes that are provided inside of the weapons, um, you can actually attach those to other master grades by the way, which looks highly comical. The overall build was fairly simple, a lot of big pieces, everything went smoothly, and cleaning up the thrusters didn't feel like a chore. Overall for me, I'm honored to have this kit on my shelf, so it's a buy. If you're an avid collector like I am and want something slightly obnoxious looking to nerd flex on, to your friends, this is the kit for you. 
That's it for the review. Let us know what you think about the Nightingale in the comments below. Would you like to get one yourself? Maybe you should. If you do, visit CanadianGundam.com, use the code Gunplay Network to save 10% off your entire order. And as for now, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos in the future. This is Boomzy, and don't forget to keep building.